Good evening and welcome to the monastery uh, this Pentecost Eve. Looking forward to tomorrow's Pentecost service and celebrating the descent of the Holy Spirit and um, especially have in our, in our thoughts and our hearts today the descent of the Holy Spirit Orthodox Mission in uh, San Luis Obispo, California with Father James Mata. Uh, I wanted to remind people that the longer videos on CanadianOrthodoxBroadcasting.ca that we've uploaded a number of them and sometimes we have them briefly on uh, our YouTube circuit and then uh, just to see if people are interested and then remove them completely to CanadianOrthodoxBroadcasting.ca I think you'll find some of the longer videos on there of interest and might, might want to follow them a little. Uh, the reason that I want to make a a short broadcast this evening is because some time ago I have mentioned in a talk that sooner or later uh, artificial life would be created. And I realized some people were quite skeptical of that, and not without cause, but in fact artificial life has been created and an artificial genome has been created. Most of you will have seen news releases about it. And I wanted to say something about it uh, briefly because far too often we make these absolute dogmatic statements about something and think that we're doing it in defense of the faith. But it's always very uh, dangerous to do that because we don't know nearly so much as we think we know. And we're always saying, well, this can't happen because. And then we base the defense of the faith on a foundation of faulty surmises, faulty guesses. We are so absolutely certain that something can't be done that we say it in a dogmatic fashion. And then when it is done, or when, we've said, when what we've said turns out to be false, our whole argument in defense of the faith simply collapses. And this is why people saying, oh, there's scientific proof in the Bible about the first two laws of quantum, of uh, uh, thermodynamics and this sort of thing. Well, one could sort of drag that out of a couple of sayings, but one would then have to say uh, in a closed system, not in an open system. So the, the uh, fact is that we don't need to defend the faith on these artificial surmises that people make. I mean, sooner or later, all of the uh, focus on the Shroud of Turin is going to turn out very negatively. I know a lot of people uh, almost shriek in hysteria when you say the Shroud of Turin is false, but of course it is. Um, and uh, the uh, fact is that it so radically contradicts Orthodox Christian tradition that either the Shroud of Turin is false or Orthodox Christian tradition is, is faulty and subject to failures. But anyway, this idea about uh, artificial life being created, uh, it's not particularly a positive thing that an artificial genome and even an artificial mitochondria or mitochondria has been created. And uh, it can be used for the most devastating and destructive of things. And since it's so unnatural, I'm sure that it will end up being used precisely that way, uh, while at the same time, positive uses for it will be found also. Just as we create bacteria that will eat oil slicks and uh, always hope that they don't decide that they want to eat something else with oil in it, like human beings. Uh, we, uh, but the one thing about the creation of artificial life it did require a creator. It did require an intelligent focus. It did require planning. And it was not uh, something that was parthenogenetic. It did not come into being by itself. And it's worth remembering that uh, artificial life can be created and probably will be created more often in the future. But it has to be created. And it has to be planned, it has to be shaped, it takes intelligence and energy to create this artificial life. And of all things else, I should say to us that 
For life to exist, it has to be created. And there has to be some plan behind it. And uh, I will always assert that there can be no life except from God. And what's happened with artificial life is people are simply imitating what's already been done, what's already been created, in a manner that is unnatural and uh, will have some kind of unnatural results in the end. But don't uh, base arguments in defense of the faith on what you think cannot be done and on your particular interpretation of small fragments of science. Uh, even when we talk about evolution of the species, what constitutes species is not quite so certain because very often uh, the, the change in something is simply a mutation of some kind and it serves a purpose or it wouldn't be retained. I know some people argue that muta mutations are always negative, but they aren't always. And the, for zebras to have the type of stripes they have, uh, well, are they really a different species from, from a horse because they have stripes? Or for, for what reason are they a different species? So sometimes what we think of as species are not really uh, species at all, or not a division of species at all, <clears throat> but rather just an extended family of some kind. So uh, that's another thing to keep into consideration. But we do ask from time to time that those people who are really exercised a great deal about evolution and, and these other subjects be very cautious in their arguments that they not undermine the Christian faith and undermine their own arguments by making statements when they don't really know what they're talking about or declaring that something cannot be done when in fact you may turn around and find that it's just been done. Use caution and use a little common sense in these arguments. That's the main thing.